Um, because there was baptisms going on today, I'd like to point out a few interesting facts, uh, one of being about coffee. Coffee was actually baptized uh, earlier in history. When coffee was first brought to the Christian Europe, it was greeted with a great deal of suspicion since it was the drink of the Muslim infidels with whom the Christians had been to war at for centuries. Some even went so far to call its exotic drink Satan's beverage. Inevitably, coffee has made its way to the Vatican, where it was introduced to Pope Clement VIII. While many of his advisors clamored for the Pope to ban the controversial drink, he refused to do so before trying it himself. The Pope was brought a steaming mug of java, and he took a sip. He was immediately delighted, and according to legend, he declared, this devil's drink is delicious. We should cheat the devil by baptizing it. And the rest is actually history. Now, because I like to procrastinate, and I have an attention deficit disorder, I looked up all the beneficial things to drinking coffee. There's actually numerous. Coffee can improve energy levels and make you smarter. Coffee can help you burn fat. The caffeine can drastically improve physical performance. There are essential nutrients in coffee. Coffee may actually lower your risk of type 2 diabetes. And my favorite was, coffee can fight depression and make you happier, making counting your blessings easier. Last part I added. But these are all great benefits, and I recommend going and getting a cup afterwards. But interesting enough, prayer actually has a lot of great health benefits as well. It may not wake you up as much, but I found that studies have shown that prayer makes you stress-free. It influences your state of mind, helping you relax and thereby reducing the effects stress has on various body organs. It is known to not only help reduce mental stress, it also helps beat physical stress and evens out your emotions when you react to it. Prayer reduces your chances of suffering from depression and anxiety, also making you happier. A study conducted by Dr. Andrew Newberg, who teaches psychology at the University of Pennsylvania, found that prayer can actually boost the level of dopamine, or happy hormone, in your brain making you happier and more peaceful. Prayer actually makes you a better person. The same study also found that practice helps reduce the level of one's ego by affecting the area of the brain associated with that emotion. It therefore makes you more humble, less greedy for material things, and in general, a better person. The last one I put down was it helps you live longer. Apart from all the other benefits of praying, one of the most striking perks is that it helps you live longer. By minimizing all the ill effects of stress and environmental factors, it helps your body heal better and age more efficiently. All this put together helps the body heal faster and beat the common ailments that affect you when you get older. Now, this was all the physical benefits and no spiritual benefits, or spiritual benefits, which I'm sure all of you are very aware of. I would also like to focus today, well, predominantly, on prayer. Just a week or so ago, I had managed to hurt my knee getting up. Now, at 26 years old, I feel a little young to have knee problems, but it happens. So, the first thing I did was started complaining that my knee hurt, and then I Tim Tebowed it, got down on one knee, and started praying for a healing. Um, I prayed, Lord, thank you for healing me. In Jesus' name I pray, my knee is better, amen. And nothing happened. Um, it is kind of disappointing. I couldn't figure out why it didn't get healed. What was really disappointing is later on that day, I had come to the church, and a kid had a bad ankle. I didn't feel like praying. I wasn't feeling spiritual. Fine, I'll pray for this kid's ankle. All right. I walked up, and it was actually Alex. I don't know if he left. I walked up to Alex. I was like, all right, in the name of Jesus Christ, uh, I command your ankle to be healed. Thank you. Amen. And he was healed. <laughs> so, beyond me. But an interesting story to go with this is, a journalist was assigned to Jerusalem's bureau of the newspaper. He gets an apartment overlooking the Wailing Wall. After several weeks, he realizes that whatever he looks at, or whenever he looks at the wall, he sees an old Jewish man praying vigorously. The journalist wondered whether there was a publishable story here. He goes down to the wall, introduces himself, and says, You come here every day to the wall. What are you praying for? The old man replies, What am I praying for? In the morning, I pray for world peace. Then I pray for the brotherhood of man. <laughs> Excuse me. I go home, have a glass of tea, and I come back to the wall and pray for the eradication of illness and disease from the earth. The journalist is taken back by the old man's sincerity. You mean you have been coming to the wall to pray every day for these things? The old man nods. 
Well, how long have you been coming to the wall to pray for these things? The old man becomes reflective and replies, How long? Maybe 20, 25 years. The amazed journalist finally asks, How does it feel to come and pray to the wall every day for 20 of these years? How does it feel, the old man replies? It feels like I'm talking to a wall. Now, excuse me, many of us have felt like this. We feel our prayers fall flat. As when I prayed for my knee, nothing happened. You kind of feel like you're talking to yourself and maybe people are watching you. But we can all rest assured. If you'd open up to 1 John 5, 13 through 15, and can I trouble someone for a tissue? <laughs> Excuse me. First John five thirteen through fifteen states I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, so that you may know that you have eternal life. This is the confidence we have in approaching God, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whether we ask, we know that we have what we asked of him. Now, two key points that I caught from this was, is first off, he hears us. Never once can you pray to God and God have a day where he's like, ah, not today, kid, and he'll ignore you. Second off, if we ask anything, it's according to his will. Now, as everyone can understand, we don't understand his will. I don't understand why people don't get healed when you pray every time. I don't understand when you do. But that's why I can explain it is, as a kid, I prayed all the time to be Mega Man, a Ninja Turtle, or possibly a superhero. Now, as you can see, I'm not Mega Man. I'm not a Ninja Turtle. The last one's questionable. <laughs> <laughs> but reasons it did not come true basically came down to heart motive. No eight-year-old needs to know ninjutsu so they can beat up bad guys. Nobody at that age either needs a huge gun attached to their arm. But at the time, I thought if I prayed more, well, then it'll come true. Nah, didn't come true. Maybe I was not good enough or I was praying incorrectly. When I went to church a few times, well, all the time, I picked up a few things from it. One of which was say thank you. Always say thank you when you're praying because the Lord has heard you and he's going to give you what you need. Also, pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Anything you ask in his name will be given to you. Now, as you can imagine, it confused me how I was still not in a turtle, but I lived. A concept I grasped from Matthew 6, 5 through 8, it reads, When you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received the reward in full. But when you pray, go into your room, close the door, and pray to your Father who is unseen. Then your Father, who sees what is done in secret, will reward you. And when you pray, do not keep on babbling like pagans, for they think they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask him. Now I wanted to point out on the verses 7 and 8, they say how not to ramble on and on because he knows. So clearly me begging God every day to make me into something that really wasn't needed would have done me no good. Now, I still feel bad sometimes because there are a lot of people that pray so elegantly and well-spoken. People with great vocabulary and extensive Christianese knowledge. You've heard them in here, and they're not bad. It's just the difference is they speak very well-spoken, and I'm always like, all right, be healed in the name of Jesus Christ. All right, that's it. And people honestly feel a little bad about it. I felt bad because I really don't elaborate or continue on too much for my prayers. But I actually got reassured when I had watched a video. It made me feel a little better. Um, if you would. <laughs> be like Ricky Bobby. I don't know what to do with my hands. <laughs> it's interesting that Jesus never condemned short press. But you have statement, more than one statement in the Bible, where Jesus actually condemned for a pretense. He told the Pharisees, you make long prayers. So we have on document that he condemned pretentious long press. 
You know, some friends, you ask them to say grace. It's the end. Your foot becomes cold. You know, friends like that, they, 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 we call it, they pray Marco Polo prayers. You know, they travel around the, the world. You know, they pray for everyone in Timbuktu. They pray for people in uh, Doremi Island. They pray for everybody all over the world. And finally, thank God for the food. <laughs> By then, your face is in the soup. <clears throat> And they think, they think they are being impressive. They think that you are impressed by their spirituality. Many a times, the long prayers are done on your own. When you stand in public, your prayers are very short. <laughs> I can see disappointment in people sometimes when they meet me in the mall somewhere. Apostle Prince, can you pray for me? I'll just touch my, their shoulder or whatever, whichever is decent, a lady or guy, you know. And then, you know, I, I, because I believe in the laying on of hands, all right, it must be appropriate. And now I pray a prayer, Father, in Jesus' name, heal this person right now of this disease. We smite this disease to its roots. In Jesus' name, it's done. Amen. How about that? They're still down there. <laughs> then I feel like, <laughs> you know, they're disappointed. They look up there and they're, uh, they, it, it almost, they don't say it, but in their thoughts, that's all. <laughs> Is that all? Is that all? One of the greatest prayers Jesus prayed was at the, tomb of Lazarus. And he looked up before, before Lazarus was raised, he looked up and said, Father! Start counting. One, two, okay? Now, Father, I thank you that you have heard me and that you hear me always. How long? A few seconds. Then he looked into the tomb. Lazarus! Come forth! By the way, that is English. In Hebrew, Aramaic is even shorter. Kumi! One word. <laughs> okay? All the prayers of Jesus are short. In fact, the shorter we pray, the bigger we make him. We are saying it's all you, Lord. People say things, you gotta pray. Oh, this situation, you gotta pray hard. Ooh. You gotta pray hard. I'm sorry, man. Wow, I tell you this one. This time I must pray hard. And hey, you better pray hard now. Let me tell you this. You pray hard. You pray soft, it is not you. Okay? It is the one you are praying to. <clears throat> so, we want to make sure we stay focused on God. But how can we become more focused upon God? Well, we become more focused by being more reliant. We become more reliant by being more of a broken person before God. I've got a story of, a, we'll say, a Baptist man in this local area. He came before a church broken. I say this because he had a couple addictions, and he came out and said right forth, or exclaimed, I have an addiction to X, Y, Z, and pornography. I tell you the last one mostly because that's an embarrassing thing to admit to people. But he went before the church, before his men's group, before everyone, and told them, I'm a broken man, I have these problems. The men prayed for him, he prayed for himself, and the church prayed for him. The man actually overcame these addictions and became a well-known member of the church. Other men that suffered from the similar problem still suffer from it to this day. What we've got to realize is in order to move forward, we have to stop relying upon ourselves and start relying more upon God. We have to be broken in order to be used. Because when we start looking at ourselves to do everything, we're going to fail. Now, when I went to the Dominican Republic... I decided to be broken before the Lord. As I had said, I'm always nervous when I pray for people because I never know what I'm going to say, and it's always short, and kind of like he was showing, it's never good enough. So I went to the Dominican, and in the, excuse me, Dominican Republic, <clears throat> and in the back of one of the villages was a blind child. There was already two people there. One was the interpreter, one was the missionary. The girl missionary was in tears praying for this kid, and I thought, well, here's my chance to walk in and show her how it's done. <laughs> so I walked back, and I said, well, could I give it a shot? She goes, yeah. I was like, all right. Put my hand over his eyes after asking them if it's okay. I started praying. I said, Lord, I thank you very much for this child. I pray that his vision come back in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you for hearing us. Amen. Remove my hand. Nothing happened. Unfortunately, even when you become broken and do things that you feel are the will of God, it doesn't mean it's going to go the way you want it to. However, I went to Africa. We were in the backwoods of a village, 
and all sorts of kids were going crazy, but they needed prayer. Now, most of the time, they needed prayer for headaches. In Africa, when kids have malaria, they get headaches. So half-hearted, once again, I didn't think it was going to work. All right, yeah, I'll pray for this kid. The interpreter with me explained to him what was going to happen. Put my hand on his head, short, quick prayer. Lord, I pray for healing on this child. May his headache be gone. And whatever problems or ailments that he has going on, be healed in the name of Jesus Christ. You good? Yep, good. Kid took off. Awesome, great. So, John Wesley had said, always be ready to pray, preach, and ready to die. Even when you don't feel like praying, you still should. God never hates when you talk to him. He never gets upset with you talking to him too much. There's a difference between talking to him and rambling. If you're trying to seem holy, eh, cut it short. If you want to talk to him a whole lot, go in private. The biggest example I can give when I say, make sure you're broken and go before the Lord. I had walked into a place in Africa. It was a prestigious school, and there was a room of about 300 to 500 boys. I had nothing prepared, and I kept telling everybody, I've got this. I've got this. First problem, self-reliant. I don't have it. Second problem, still be prepared. I had nothing ready to go. I walked up in front of the crowd and said, all right, my name is Ryan. What am I supposed to say? And the interpreter goes, uh, just talk about whatever you want. Yeah, I bombed. My prayer, just as bad. So even though we go in front of, or when you go in front of anybody to pray, preach, whatever it may be, make sure you don't look to yourself for all these things. Even if you think that you're bad at something, whether it be public speaking, speaking to people about prayer, whatever it is, still give it an attempt. Got to look upon that as a favorable action. Now, I do have to explain that if you pray, it does not mean that life is going to be easy. Contrary to popular belief, just because you pray doesn't mean that God's going to come down and be like, you're good. <laughs> Continue on. <clears throat> but I can tell you that if you pray, you have God's favor more so, and that he will be there with you. Um, I would like to close in prayer. Father, thank you very much for giving me this honor to speak in front of these people. I pray that someone takes something home from this. Father, again, I thank you, and may you bless these people this week. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.